Welcome to Living a Full Life Podcast. Join us as we explore health topics that encourage raising healthy children, living a healthy life, and living the best life possible. Now, here's your host. Welcome to another podcast of Living a Full Life. I'm in today with Tom, and actually this is like an inverse uh, interview. He's going to interview me about red light. His team at Jay Campbell are all excited about what the trifecta red light bed does in our office. And um, they were like, hey, man, we, we really need to market this. And I was like, yeah, we really do need to market this because I'm having a hard time getting this out there because people really don't know much about red light, yet alone this technology that we've invested into. We've seen amazing results uh, with red light. We use it for a whole bunch of things. And we're ending up learning that it's actually doing a lot more other things than we're not telling people about. The most common effects are like skin, collagen, wrinkles, their face looks better, their stretch marks look better. It's all like an immediate skin effect, but we're using it for like inflammation, fat loss, fat shrinking. uh, And that's what we've been pushing. And those effects take a little bit longer. So that's what we've seen so far is a lot of people coming in recently. Now that we've been running it for six months, people are like, my cholesterol is better. My white blood cells are normal. My like anti-inflammatory type markers are starting to show up in their blood work, which is pretty cool. So now we're going to run into getting more of this data. <clears throat> but yeah, that's that's where we're at so far. Six months into this, we've been using the trifecta wrap for about three years. So we know a little bit about it and we've been doing it, but that's where we are so far. All right. So just to clarify, the wrap is the older machine, the Pro 50 50- Pro 450 is a new one you've been using for the past six months. Correct. The 450 is like, it looks like a tanning bed. The one that you lie in, in and um, surround yourself with light. The old wrap system is like cool sculpting and those those types of wrap systems that you would wrap directly around mm-hmm. the skin, the thighs, the arms, the abdomen. Yes. Understood. Um, now, one question I want to ask just from the beginning. Um, whenever I see red light being talked about, it's always talked about as Red light and near infrared light. Why is it all the two talk together? Why is it never one or the other? Why are the two always um, combined when people talk about them? On the spectrum of light, we have uh, red light, we have near infrared light, we have infrared, and then we have white light. This is all based on the nanometers of the wavelength of the of the light that we're using. So it actually in medicine goes from red light all the way to cold laser, which is white light. Uh, which is about 900 nanometers. We started about 500 na- nanometers with what's visible light. Uh, then the red light turns into different colors as we get even even lower than that. So we don't. You can use purple light, blue light. Those things do different things because the wavelength becomes lower and lower and lower, which doesn't give you much penetration between the, the, underneath the skin. Red light and near infrared can actually penetrate the skin and get a little bit deeper than the skin subcutaneous area. So we are really good at decreasing inflammation subcutaneously, which means fat deposits Mm -hmm. that are underneath there, visceral fat that's underneath there. But if somebody came in with like a a disc herniation with disc pain along their spine, red light and infrared light would not get enough penetration to go, you know, a half an inch, one inch, two inches deep. So once we get into cold lasers, class three, class three B, we pulse that light because it can get hot, the white light. And usually you have to wear uh, goggles to protect your retina because white light can actually damage your retina. Red light cannot. It doesn't penetrate that deep and it doesn't affect your retina, that wavelength. So pretty cool stuff. So you can lie in the red light bed 450 with uh, no goggles, no sunglasses, nothing. But typically when you work with cold laser for injury, uh, that white light penetrates a lot deeper. I used to use it in my last practices. And then in cosmetic surgery, it won't pulse class four laser it's a constant beam of light you can actually cut skin it hot it gets hot they use it for removal tattoo removals uh laser cosmetic surgery laser surgery um that's in more surgical centers so that's the that's the wavelength of light uh and how color works without becoming too nerdy that's about. okay i mean so basically yeah. you, now you're kind of emerging and you're talking about so generally you're talking about phototherapy as a whole not necessarily red light therapy correct phototherapy is the entire spectrum of light yes right and uh with how much of a difference is there between red light and near infrared because like i said before i noticed that people t- do use those terms sometimes interchangeably and i'm wondering if that's a technical distinction or if there's a reason why people say both red light and near infrared are helpful Near infrared encompasses red light. So in oh. that in that wavelength of near infrared is red light. 
So that's okay. where red light falls under that umbrella of okay. near infrared. Once we get into infrared, you can't see the red anymore. It becomes a very faint. If you were to use infrared, it'd be like a, a light red color. If you use a, a red light bed, the entire room looks like you're staring at the sun. It's just this bright red light. It looks like a, a nuclear reaction, perfectly safe, but super bright red. All right. Um, so one thing I wanted to talk about, and imagine the reason Jay went to primarily was um, fat loss, if I'm not mistaken, because that's a big thing that he's been harping on. And I read some of the studies that you linked to me through the Trifecta website, and the common theme that seemed to be very prominent was uh, making the fat cell memories more porous without killing the fat cells. Why is it important to not kill the fat cells? Fat cell, I mean, are important. Every cell in your body is important. Every cell in your body. So when we talk about somebody that's 350 pounds and somebody that's 150 pounds and they're both six feet tall, um, they both have the same amount of cells in their body. So just the person that's 350 pounds has swollen cells, unless they're the rock. Maybe they're 350 pounds of pure muscle, but their 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 cells are swollen, giving them that inflammatory risk factors that come with overweight and being obese. That come with that. So we have the same. So we don't want to remove fat cells. Fat cells play a role in the detoxification process in the body. Um, we just don't want them hyperinflamed all the time because it brings negative health benefits from it. So really important to not kill fat cells because when we destroy cells in the body, we create an inflammatory process of macrophages that need to go in and, and uh, take care of those dead cells. So if you're killing cells, uh, that's a bad thing. Your body is actually dying. So we don't want to create that inflammatory response from killing it. In liposuction, um, they actually go in there and like completely remove the cell. So they are killing it, but it's being removed. So our body doesn't have to create a macrophage response and have to recycle all that material, which is very stressful on our immune system. Right. Um, and on that subject, um, I'm reading your FAQ. And one of the things that you say is... Um, you should recommend liver support to your patients because, quote, the liver is the ultimate filter to remove toxins and nutrient byproducts from the body. The fast release of fat can sometimes overwhelm the liver, and for this reason, a high-quality liver support is recommended. So with that in mind, what do you recommend for high-quality liver support? And Is it like a supplement or like a food? Like How does that work in your practice? Multiple supplements. So when it comes to weight loss, the reason why – we bring in gizmos, as I like to talk, because there's tons of stuff on the market. Half of it's bull. The other half is actually very viable. And the reason we bring it in is because weight loss is very restrictive in marketing. Google does not allow it. Uh, right. Facebook does not allow it. You pretty much have to use billboards or mail to the houses for this stuff. <clears throat> so because of that, this is where Ultra Slim, Cool Sculpting, Trifect, all these companies are coming out with ways to entice people that there's a natural way to lose fat. But the trick to this is that you can't just hop on the bed and go and eat wine or go and eat McDonald's and drink wine. I right. mean, it, 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 so we teach them a weight loss program. So this gets them through the door. They realize, hey, I got to couple this with an anti-inflammatory diet, tons of different diets you can choose. The one we do is uh, intermittent fasting in the morning, okay. eat, eat lunch and dinner, but whole foods. Protein, veggies, fruits. Pretty, pretty simple stuff. Comes from right. everything. Mediterranean diet, whole food diet, whole third, paleo. It comes from all the same stuff. Absolutely. But these, it's because these diets work. So we, and then we get amazing results. Then we couple it with the red light. Their fat uh, cells shrink faster. They see amazing results faster than maybe joining, you know, Jenny Craig online, trying to do it themselves. So that's where, and it ends up becoming a very affordable weight loss program because they're not wasting a lot of time and money. We do it six weeks at a time. People lose 20 plus pounds every six weeks. So if they have more weight to lose, it's pretty amazing stuff. So good question there. So the liver support stuff, the, once you start losing weight, you're shrinking the cell. All that interior intracellular fluid has to go into your lymphatic system. Your body now is processing all those toxins at a higher rate. And then the liver's under a lot of stress. So then we give them phospholipidocholine, uh, coenzyme Q10, it depends on the patient, their blood work, their history. Some people have thyroid issues. Some people might be diabetic. You got to play with this. So our program is doctor supervised. So a doctor is always supervising the patient through that. Good question. though. Right. Um, and um, another thing I want to ask on the subject of a weight loss program is um, have you been able to determine that a lot of the accelerated fat loss was due to the red light specifically, not just because they're following a diet for the first time. Because I imagine at some point you would have to, if you're really serious about this, 
calorie control subjects between a placebo and the test group, even though some of these technologies are already FDA approved. So I'm wondering, like, how do you guys make the distinction to know, like, how much is red light contributing versus how much just a healthy lifestyle is contributing? Right. Those studies have been done, actually, up through the history of red light, so right. and which is over 25 years old. So modernly in the last 15 years is where we got all these technologies, but uh, and the beds are very new. Um, just at a high dose. So we, we've done that. We've had control, group with diet, group with red light, and then group with both. And right. the group with both shrink faster, faster inch loss mm -hmm. than, the, than the other two groups. So they, they win in every category. And a lot of all the other competitors to Trifecta have their studies too. Same thing. So red light has been now shown to, to be, so my joke is if China mass produces and, and, and replicates on a, on a lower level, obviously it's working because they've got traction. They're just creating these fake pads that don't really do anything. So, um, so if they're doing it, it obviously is working. It's not just a gimmick. So that, that's where we're at. And those tests are all over by different companies. You can find them all over the web. I just wanted to support right. Trifecta uh, because that's the bet I have, but it's right. all out there. So they've done the controls. When you do both together, it's a faster, it's a more dramatic, um, visible people's clothes start to get looser on them right away rather than the group uh the diet group seems to be the best group so people who just did red light without without a proper diet program had the least results they had a lot of skin results and the great benefits of red light but when it came to weight loss their weight actually didn't change too much it was more the people that followed a diet Interesting. So they had good body composition results, but not good weight loss results. Is that not right. understanding correctly? Right. You can shrink fat cells, which are lighter on the body than muscle cells. Muscle mm -hmm. cells are a lot heavier than our fat cells. So a uh, five pounds of fat is like 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 a small watermelon, and right. five mount five pounds of muscle is like condensed piece of like uh, a baseball. Right. Yeah. So it's very different the mass uh, distribution because a lot's more water weight than the other. Interesting. Interesting. And on that note, um, I'm curious to know, like, I mean, there, there are thousands of red devices on the internet, as you already know. I mean, you go on Amazon, you can see like a hundred dollar, two hundred dollar pad with like five thousand reviews. And yeah, here you guys are. You've chosen one of the most premium products on the market. Why out of all the products on the market, clinical, non-clinical, did you decide to go with Trifecta 450 specifically? Lots of research. I, I just did my research and we don't have a lot of gizmos in our office. And the few things that we have are the best on the market, or at least close to the best in the market. Um, so I've always been like that. Even the nutraceuticals we we have in our office are not just one brand. We have the best multivitamin on our shelf and the best, best liver detox on the shelf and the best collagen on the shelf, all different brands from different parts of the United States because we do our research. That's what we do. We don't carry a lot. We, don't, we just carry the best and what we need to get the patients through. Um, we pride ourselves on that and we, and we did the research and we had the results with the wrap. So the wrap gave us a lot of confidence to stick with trifecta and mm -hmm. say, Hey, well, we'll invest in your new one. We actually were, were, it was such, it was such a backup in production. We actually had their previous model that we put down on. So by the time it came up that we were ready to get the new model, they're like, by the way, we will distribute you on the new model. It's a little bit extra. And we said, go for it. And we were the, I think the fourth bed in America wow. to get it here in Tampa. So that, that was pretty cool. Uh, and the results, I've been pushing the fat loss. I've been pushing the anti-inflammation and the pain as a chiropractor, but the feedback I'm getting is way more than that. Uh, we, we, we are getting people's cholesterol blood work coming back better and they're doing nothing. They're just doing the red light, no chiropractic, no functional medicine, nothing. Wow. Pretty cool. So I'm curious, um, how many of the subjects are usually obese people versus people like Jay who are leaner? Because I'm trying to think like if this thing would be useful for obese people, but then there's diminishing returns as you become a leaner individual. Say like somebody who's at 30% body fat is going to get something much different from what somebody at 15% body fat would, is, would get. And that demographic that's, you know, 15% body fat trying to get down to 13%. Uh, is a completely different mindset for these people. They're doing everything they can, both working out, diet, and everything. You actually need to, it's just like uh, cardio. When you're trying to get that last 2%, you got to increase that cardio. You got to restrict the carbohydrates. It puts you into another level. Uh, same thing with the red light. To get that results for the last two, you just got to do way more red light. Uh, so even though we tell our patients two to three times a week for fat loss, 
uh, for global fat loss, getting from 30 BMI to 26 BMI. That's a different story. Right. Somebody who wants to get down to 13% athletic BMI, um, they might be doing this every five days a week to, to right. try, try and get that results from that. So that's, and that's what we're learning and testing on the population. And most of our patients fall into the overweight, mm. uh, not very many or 30 plus BMIs. They're up in the upper twenties, you know, that they've got 30 pounds to lose. They got something like that. That's, that's it. But we've had people lose 128 pounds, like on, on this program, uh, with diet, diet did the most of it. Um, but this light is just such a great, um, subset to this. Actually, you know, that would lead me to my next question, which I just came up with, you know, um, sure. There's clearly the proven mechanism of, um, making the fat cell memory more porous and all that, which is outlined in the studies you gave me, but I'm wondering like, if red light changes anything cognitively, because I'm, I'm starting to think like, what if this red light technology has the power to somehow, like, let's say you put the a pad in your brain, for example, like, or on your forehead, you know, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden things like uh, mental health ailments and other things are just suddenly a lot easier to deal with. Have you noticed that in your practice? We have with the, with the people that strictly are coming in for red light, you know, they haven't even been introduced to the stuff we're doing. They're coming back reporting better, me- better memory, less mm-hmm. brain fog, uh, there's tons of studies. If you keep going through the ones I sent you on Parkinson's, MS, I mean, brain stuff that we have. I've been seeing it with post-concussion syndrome. I put people on that, like after a car accident or a sports injury on there to just help decrease inflammation. They sleep better. Their their pupil reflex comes back a lot quicker just because we're reducing inflammation on the brain. So really, you can u- use this anywhere. Knee, knee pain, shoulder pain. I, that's how I've been using it. It's been absolutely fantastic. Neuropathy. This is a big one we're doing right now. Um, wrapping people's legs because in that population, they have a tough time lying down or even moving. They're just in a lot of pain, so they can't lie down on the bed. So that's why we, we've kept both technologies in our office. So yeah, when it comes to brain stuff, I I wish I had more patients uh, to talk about today about all that stuff and be like, oh my gosh, this has been so good for like dementia patients, but I don't have that stuff yet. As I do more, I'll talk about it more, but for cholesterol, dizziness, vertigo, these patients are getting results without any other medical care. Interesting. Now for the fat loss, since you're using the bed, do you cover people's bodies and then expose a specific segment of the body or do you just do the whole body regardless? That's why we got the bed. It's just so much easier. Red light cannot penetrate any material. So if you wear a shirt or a bra or underwear, it will not penetrate that area. It will be absorbed by the color of that garment. Right. So I, I always tell patients, you know, lock the door. It's all yours and uh, bring your bathing suit or, or take off your shirt and just expose as much skin as possible that you like. Mm-hmm. We just had a lady start for frozen shoulders. She can't move her shoulder. I'm like, go in there. We're doing this for your shoulder, but watch all these men. And she's like 50. Uh, watch all these benefits. And she's like, oh, I'm getting naked because of the skin, the collagen, the wrinkles. She's like, I'm, I'm going to, you know, mm-hmm. I'm going to just uh, be in my underwear. I'm like, great. Um, so, yeah, you want to expose as much as possible. Right. But um, if, if you just covered up, let's say I covered up everything else except for my belly, would the results be more um, targeted or would it be the same thing regardless? Same thing. Because the because the wavelength travels in one direction, it doesn't scatter. Right. A, a straight stream. It's targeting. That's why you have lights on the bed above and below. So you're like the sandwich. You're like the meat in the sandwich, right? So everything's just penetrating like that. But again, red light only gets a few centimeters of penetration. So it just gets to the fat cells and the skin. That's where all the great stuff happens. But when it comes to the head, we're getting like clarity here because it's right there. The skull's right there. It can penetrate the global surface of the brain. Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool. Actually, Same I- like hands and feet. Right. So on that question, actually, just a small aside, um, I have heard some people target red light therapy for hair loss. How does that work? Uh, not working for me, but, but uh, yeah, red light, it, it stimulates blood flow. This is one of the things it does, circulation and blood flow. And the theory about uh, alopecia, maybe not just male pattern hair, uh, hair loss, but alopecia and some of the other things, once you bring back uh, blood flow to those areas and they, they sell these like caps you can buy, they have head wraps you can buy, it's all red light. So you were, you brought up a question earlier about, you know, these, how do you know the difference between the Chinese stuff coming out on Amazon versus this? It's just really knowing the science behind light and, and photo, photo, uh, the photo industry about this, these Christmas lights that you use just bulbs don't emit any, any actual red light wavelength it's just the color so you have to know diode versus led versus and then how many of these bulbs are actually on the mat so some people are getting um tricked 
by just having light bulbs on these mats and they look red. So uh, uh, typically if you buy a mat that's small, let's say it's like eight inches by 18 inches, you won't actually see much red. So if you light up this mat and it's red, you're getting just these Christmas lights. You're not, you're not actually. I like that the expression Christmas lights. Yeah. That's all you're getting. Right. So, and it's the truth. So it's all about the diode. And mm-hmm. these things, and that's why this technology is expensive because each one of those diodes is not cheap. It's not it's not a light bulb with a filament in it. It's an LED emitting that wavelength. So that's it. And our bed, we can actually change the wavelengths within for fat loss and for pain. Right. So that's cool. We couldn't do that with the wrap. So what do, you, what do you mean by changing for fat loss versus pain? Could you expand on that further? The uh, pain, the wavelength. So we're going to go down to uh, five the 500 wavelength for of red light for fat loss to keep it penetrating just the skin. And then we'll go up to about 800 uh, for the people who have global inflammation and pain. So it can penetrate a little bit deeper. Maybe the people with the brain fog that we were talking about, we put them on the 800 or neuropathy or any type of pain or inflammation type things we want to target. So there's a range that you can pick and you can actually customize it. So doctors like myself may play with the full range. I might actually go like 720, something very unique for that patient because I know their body composition, their size. And I can customize the wavelength for them rather than some of these machines that are just on, off, on, off. Right. Um, so to that point, um, with these devices, um, even though they're crapping and are on Amazon and they're just Christmas lights, um, what would explain why people are leaving these five-star reviews and claiming they've seen results from them? Like, is it just a placebo effect magnified by that much like what's really going on there because like it, it, it doesn't seem it makes no sense to me that like we have this really expensive critical device that you were using with success obviously but then you've all these amazon reviews of people who are using these devices that are supposedly crappy yet they claim they're getting results like are they lying are they victims of the placebo effect like what's the story there well i think all of the above i mean i'd love to see them post before and after pictures that are real of them themselves you don't see a lot of that happening. You know, our patients do. They post their pictures. So uh, I think it's all of the above. I think some of these companies are not controlled by the FDA because they're overseas. They can do whatever they want. Let's just be honest. Amazon's a full, it's got everything on it, good and bad. Everywhere. Unfortunately, you can buy supplements on Amazon now. I, I don't, so I wouldn't give that to my family. But, um, that, you know, so I don't have an answer for you there. I think there's good and bad people doing things all over the internet. So right. you got to take it with a grain of salt. Uh, are your patient testimonials and all the information posted on the Trifecta Light Bed website? Do you have your own website for sharing? We have our own website because the bed is physical. We're not virtual. Uh, we keep it hyper-local to Tampa, and uh, we just want them to share their stories there and on our website. And and again, weight loss. Got to be very careful where we tag all this stuff. So um, so it's all over the place. Tr- uh Our YouTube channel is free. We, I mean, we can post all the stuff on there. That doesn't hurt us in any way. So it's it's all over the place, yeah. Trifecta and on full life. Okay, uh, is it a uh, My Lutz Chiropractors? That's your website. That's the one. Okay, all right. I'll I'll be looking for that and um, take a look at the uh, other stuff. Okay, perfect. Um, what else do I want to ask you? Um, so with can you tell me more about what Jay's experience was like, or at least like what how he felt he was getting benefits out of the bed when he used it. Cause I know he was there to use it for a couple minutes. Yeah, he did a full session. Uh, him and his wife tried it out. He, he loved it. I mean, it's hard to tell when you're sitting in there because um, you, the effects come afterwards. I mean, you have, and you have to repeat it, but he's had such great result with another brand that he uses that he's a full believer. Yeah. In this I know, stuff. I know so, what it is. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah. So he likes, um, he liked, he liked it. He said nothing but great things about it, but he's so passionate that, the research and the technology is actually there. It's, it is one of the best, if not the best, red light therapy that's out on the market today. So he was he was just ex- as excited as I was to get the message out there about it. And that's what spurred this whole conversation between you and me. It's like, yeah, I mean, the way I'm doing this is not filling its purpose. Like I'm, I'm doing it as a, as a marketing thing to get people in the office to teach them about weight loss properly so that they can have lifelong effects of weight loss, which is just changing up their diet and influencing their life. Uh, but there's so much more to it, so much more to it. I found that it's very difficult right now, even when I tell a patient with pain, hey, come try red light. They're like, well, what's red light? It's like a completely new thing uh, to most people. This is it safe. Is it a microwave? You know, what, what's going to happen to me? You know, I'm like, no, it's, it's perfectly safe. So it's, it's almost like 
a grassroots marketing program that we have to do and build up and get much more information out there. So, and we start with things like this. Right. And uh, this bed, it's uh, is the bed FDA approved or is it just the underlying technology that's FDA approved? How does that work? Just as a side. Yeah, the underlying technology is FDA approved. So the wavelengths that we're using have to mm -hmm. be FDA approved in order to treat any patient. So that's there. Trifecta, don't quote me on this. I don't know if they've had their patent FDA approved. I want to okay. assume so. In, medicine, in medical devices, I, I assume so. Right. Uh, and my question next would be about long-term results. Now, granted, some of the studies that I've seen on red light therapy are done over a shorter time interval, like let's say a few weeks. But I'm wondering, like, um, let's say... I do a week of fat loss treatment. Like how long are those results going to sustain before I go back to my norm, assuming I keep everything the same in terms of like diet and exercise? Yeah, great question. I, I already tell patients this, it's going to go back to, if you did it for one week, in one week, you'll be right back. If you did it for one month, you're going to one month, you're going to be right back to where you are. You have to change the underlying reason of why your cells are being swole, getting swollen up anyways. So um, if we eliminate the kerosene, the fire can't get any bigger, right? If we keep reintroducing kerosene to the campfire, we're just going to keep getting these blazes. It's just going to keep coming back. So good question. But it, I just say, you know, if you do it for a week in a week, you're probably going to be back to where you are. Do you need to continue it forever? That's the next question. No, not, not, not if you eliminate the kerosene. Right. So basically, in that, but that way, you would consider it light as an accelerant, and not as a replacement. 100%. Okay, I, I, like I, I, I would do long term uh, red light therapy for collagen, elastin, all the benefits that the skin gets from red light. I would love to do that forever. I mean, just to maintain skin health, collagen health, elastin health, um, minimize wrinkles help with skin uh, circulation this is help this helps mm -hmm. prevent you know pathologies of the skin later on too so a lot a lot of good stuff it heals uh, sun damage uv damage it does a lot of cool stuff mm -hmm. so lo the long term effects become more natural cosmetic than they do um anything else interesting so it's it's almost like um if i'm using an analogy it's like getting your hair cut you're not going to do it every day but like every 2 or 3 months you come in and you know you make yeah. sure you put everything back to normal in a way. So that, am I understanding it that way? Correct. Yeah. You'd have to find, you'd have to find the frequency that works for you. And a lot of our patients that have been using it for four plus months have now found their normal that they want to do. And then they're buying packages based on how often they're going to use it once a week, once every two weeks. Um, it's becoming more than, I don't think anyone's at the once every two months. I don't think anyone's spacing those out that far. Um, but I would say twice a month, I would say people are doing that right now. And they say they're, they're benefiting. They, they, they maintain mm -hmm. their skin or something, something cosmetic that they're maintaining that they like. Right. Um, how Me affordable, too. how affordable would you say this is for most people? Because I imagine that in your case, I mean, it's, it's not a cheap machine, you know, and imagine if, to offer this stream to people is not cheap either. So it's kind of like as much as I want to promote it, it's like, I want to make sure that people are in the right financial standing to afford this because if they're paying that much, they want to get that much out, even though that can't be directly um, quantifiable. Exactly. And, and because it's a newer product, I give the analogy when I, uh, other chiropractors and uh, other doctors ask me about it. I tell them, listen, you're buying a Ferrari and you're opening up an Uber account. You got to figure out what the cost per ride is to make sure before the Ferrari breaks down, you pay it off. But we're in business here. We don't want to break even. If we paid a hundred thousand for the Ferrari, you can't buy a Ferrari for a hundred thousand. But if you buy, if you buy it for that much, you want to make 150 mm -hmm. before that thing breaks down. You have to buy a new Ferrari. Make sense? So that's what this machine is. It's not a Hyundai. And I tell my patients that that's why you're not getting it for three dollars a session. It's a Ferrari, and you're gonna lie in it for 12 minutes, and we're gonna have a great race around the track, and you're gonna get great benefits from it. So from a business perspective, we're still playing with that. We're still we've done a whole bunch of different packages. People mm -hmm. are confused. They're like, well, what, well, which one do I buy? I'm like, well, depends what, what the goals are. So we're still learning about it. And we're just going to have to see the longevity of this bed. Our wrap is still functioning. It's still working after three years. So that's where we got to play with. And I'm, I'm at the beginning of the market with this one. So I don't have the facts. I don't know. Are we going to win? Or are we going to lose in business? Right. Uh, now, but the, patient, the patients win. Now, to your point, you mentioned the 12-minute session. How did you come across that specific time interval? Why not 20? Why not an hour? Like, what, why 12 minutes? 
because of the diode. So our wrap system, we have to do 20 up to 40 minutes. The first session is 20. As patients get used to it, they work their way up to 40 minute uh, intervals or, of sessions because their body, the penetration, we're shrinking as the cells get smaller, they need more photonic energy to get smaller. So at the very beginning, you know, 20 minutes shrinks the cell, but you know, two weeks later that those cells need a little bit more time to cook to, to become smaller. So, but with the bed, we've quadrupled the light force. So we don't need to start at, at uh, 20 minutes. We can start at 10 because mm-hmm. we're getting four times the amount of light. And really, instead of because you're doing four times the amount of light, you don't have to go from 20 to 40 minutes. You can go from 10 to 12 minutes. That's mm-hmm. that's the fraction of growth. So anything over 12 minutes in the literature showed to not be any more beneficial than 12 minutes. Right. So, that's so, there's, so there's actually a proven diminishing returns above a certain point, in other words. Exactly. Yep. After, after 12 minutes, uh, the skin starts to warm. You get too much circulation to the skin, and it's called uh, redness of the skin. It will block the light from penetrating anymore. So the fact okay. that... See, that's an interesting thing because I've, I've kind of asked people about this before and they haven't really dived into it that specifically. They say, like, oh, you know, it's just kind of the right amount. But now that you're mentioning an actual diminishing of returns, that's now provides more context because some people would wonder, you know, like, if, why, why 12? Why not just stop, go to like an hour and get, you know, four times the benefits? But now that you're telling yeah. me that there's these returns, now that makes sense, especially when you're using something like um, the trifecta bed to emit the red light therapy. Right. Yeah. If you lie there for 24 hours straight, you'd be like, Hey, I could lose 50 pounds. It doesn't, it doesn't work. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So, um, you mentioned in the earlier parts of the interview, or I think in the very beginning, there are benefits of red light therapy that aren't being talked about that are undiscovered. Could you talk about some of those? All the, all the things that we're getting back and no one has told me anything about cholesterol. And okay. here I am, and this is the number one thing I've been seeing in the last three months is the cholesterol, the actual mm-hmm. markers. People are bringing in their blood work saying I have done nothing. My, my diet is not good mm-hmm. and my cholesterol is going down and they're all 40 plus uh, age. So that's been very interesting. We're actually going to work with a local medical doctor here to actually refer some patients back and forth to collect the data more of a clinical case study, more localized, um, just to see what's going on with cholesterol. Is this truly decreasing cholesterol? What's the mechanism mm-hmm. to this? Is it truly healing the liver? Is it, is it just the anti-inflammatory response? Uh, is cholesterol in the blood being used to actually heal? Because that's what cholesterol's role in, in the human body is, is to circulate and heal damaged arterial tissue. That's what cholesterol is there for. So cholesterol is not a bad thing. It's just if we have too much we create too much traffic and that can create a traffic jam or a blood clot or, you know, whatever risk of stroke. So that's where cholesterol is in there. So very cool. Uh, I'm not a researcher, so I don't know how far this is going to go, but at least we'll get some clinical data from primary care physicians referring straight to us and like a placebo, those patients will do nothing else. They won't do a diet. They won't do anything. They'll just use the red light. And then in 60 days, we'll redo their blood. Mm -hmm. Um, My next question would be, is there anybody who red light is not right for? Because I'm wondering, like, you know, we're selling this thing. It sounds so perfect. But I'm wondering, like, are there people who you say for this specific demographic, probably it's best to stay away from red light? Skin cancer, cancer in general. That's definitely a contraindication. Not shown in any of the studies to be harmful at all. So, so I think this comes from the old research of cold laser and light therapy that increases because in red light, you have an increase in adenosine triphosphate, ATP. This is the energy inside each cell. Right. Red light does stimulate the mitochondria to produce more ATP, which is a good antioxidant and an anti-inflammation process. So in cancer patients with cancer cells, we really don't want to stimulate any of their mitochondria to do anything silly. So I think as a precautionary, cancer has been something that you should be out of remittance for over one year. Uh, and then good to go. So we've had breast cancer patients go on there, you know, cause they've been in remittance for over a year and cleared by their doctor. So it's been, it's been good that way. And of course, pregnancy, I think those are just two things that we don't want to speed up any cell process in the fetus at all, uh, or, or even mess with that. We don't even want to play with that. So, uh, those are the two things that we say no. Uh, and I think that's more just for, for the patient safety. Other than that, it, it's okay. We have to keep an eye on, uh, titanium replacements, shoulder replacements, hip replacements, and just monitor the patient to make sure there is actually no heating or any, right. any, uh, you know, of the, of it, but it doesn't, it doesn't penetrate that far to do that. But again, things that we should consider 
uh, devices, pacemakers, right. things like that. It's not going to interrupt the pacemaker because it's not sending any disruption in the electrical, but heating of any of the filaments, we don't want any of that. Right. Yeah, that's good. Um, if it makes sense. Um, in terms of um, literature, I mean, I'm not sure if you've done, gone through this, but I've bought, okay, this is kind of a silly confession on my end, okay? I okay. bought every single book on Amazon about red life therapy with my own okay. money. I'm not joking. I, I, I can show you my Kindle library. It's every single book on Amazon that's available, including the paperbacks, which are coming to my house this week. Wow. Okay. And the overwhelming majority of them are terrible. I can either find the information online or they're not good. There are only two or three really? books that I say are really good. Uh, what has your, been, your experience with uh, finding literature for life therapy? Because I imagine you, not only do you have to wade through all the garbage, but like there are also different terms that people use. Like Some people will not say real life therapy specifically, but they'll say low level laser therapy or they'll say photobiomodulation. Um, what are your go tos for finding good information about red light therapy in general? You have to look at the research. So okay. all books that are written are just somebody's opinion on the research that they have crossed and it's, and it's convinced them one way or the other. So I write a book. So me, I'm going to write a book about how Italians are the best in the world. Right. But that's just <laughs> that's super biased. Right. So mm -hmm. that doesn't work very well. And I'm going to go find the literature to show how the Roman empire was the best empire ever, but that's okay. So when I do my research, I'm going to PubMed and I'm looking at research by the universities, uh, universities, research centers, double blind placebo, uh, clinical studies and case studies. I mean, that's just the, the formality of scientific research is we start with double blind placebo and work our way down. Um, right. The, the double blind placebo gold standard research, it was invented by the pharmaceutical company because it's very easy to do with synthetics to, with, uh, with chemicals, very hard to do with like exercise physiology because the, you can't double blind someone. Same thing with chiropractic. You can't not touch someone and perform a, a, a sham adjustment on someone. And so if you touch them, there's some type of energy distribu distribution there. So as soon as you touch them, the study doesn't work, but you can do uh, placebo studies. You can do all this. So for me, it's not books. I will buy books by trusted uh, researchers or doctors that I want to dive sure. deeper into, but I found the same problem with you over my 16 years of being a doctor. And we tend to as doc and my wife too, as functional medicine, we tend to go straight to PubMed and the literature just to see what is coming out. And if it's a case study, we take it with a grain of salt. But if it's a clinical study, we're like, hey, look at this. This is pretty cool. Um, so that's it. And that's what I was talking about cholesterol. It's going to be more of case studies, each patient's case study. Once you get many of these, you have a sample size and you create a clinical study. And that's pretty cool. Then you can move into a, a laboratory study of placebo testing. Right. And the, uh, the, the cholesterol reading, you, I find that you said it was specifically interesting because um, if you can take care of someone's cholesterol with just red light therapy alone, and even like a basic lifestyle program, right? And that eliminates the need for pharmaceuticals entirely, even things like uh, Ozempic. 100%. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Our patients, it's funny, our patients, because we have compounded uh, semiglutide and um, all, all ter 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 Yeah. Yeah. We have access to that. And I tell them, listen, if, you, if you're running into an issue, they're like, no, 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 no. I want to do this naturally. So I think chiropractors play on the other side of the fence. It's just we attract people who are just sick and tired of being sick and tired with medicine. So we get that and they want to do it the old fashioned way. And yes, we've been getting results for a hundred years doing it naturally with change of diet, decreasing cholesterol, mm -hmm. decreasing A1C through, through diet. Right. We, we believe in this. So we know it works. Um, if you're, if you're using drugs, it's because you have other, other things going on that are restricting right. you from getting to your results, or you just don't have the energy to put into a hundred percent. Like, Jay, trying to get down to 5% body fat. I mean, you need to be in a mindset, have the time and the energy to do that, to get there. Most people are just happy to get down to like 25% and not be sluggish uh, all the time. So, yeah. So cholesterol, uh, could you tell me maybe one or two more benefits that you find people aren't talking about? Because there's obviously the fat loss people talk about. People talk about skincare all the time. People talk about anti-aging. People talk about... Um, Satellite elimination, but I'm wondering if there's maybe one or two other things you've noticed that people aren't really paying attention to in red light. I mean, like, where are you also kind of at the forefront of things? The third one is mood. That's the mood. third biggest one in our office is mood. Uh, I don't know if this is mental um, clarity or what's going on, but their mood is changing. And I've been directing it back to their, their sleep improves. 
Mm-hmm. So decreasing that inflammation, I think from a doctor's mentality, I'm just thinking of all the possible hormonal cascades that happen when you decrease inflammation, it's probably regulating the cortisol rhythm. And I, and I think because of that, their mood changes because they don't have the highs and the lows anymore and they're getting back into a better sleep. So when they wake up, they've got the cortisol spike and it comes right down normally like it used to when they were 12 years old. So I think, I think that's it there. We can follow that up with cortisol studies to, to check that, but mood is number three for me. That's been kind of neat. Okay. So fat loss, cholesterol, and mood. Those are your big three that you've noticed. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, so is there anybody who you've seen red light therapy not work for? Like, or is there anybody who like, who's an outlier and like for some reason it didn't work for them? Like, could you maybe expand on that a bit? The people who don't listen, I mean, uh, the, and there's a good handful of them. I'm going to say, you know, 20%. So one out of five people that start the program, we do it, we throw everything at them and they're truly not doing it, you know? And then once you, once you ask them from, from a heart to heart, not from a doctor to patient, they're like, yeah, I went to the movies last Friday, had a, a bag of gummy bears. I did, you know, it just, it, it just, it's always so obvious as to why, because I tell people, listen, I cleared you. I checked your blood work, your thyroid, your A1C, everything. You're not diabetic. I don't have any other reasons why you're failing. And then that's where it all comes out. Yes, I do. I do eat, you know, I did. You told me no bread, no pasta. We went to Carabas. I'm like, okay, see, so there we go. This is just not going to work because I told you to eliminate the kerosene. You went and got the kerosene and that, and that's, actually, okay. you know that's, okay. that's, that's an interesting point you mentioned is um, the use of blood work alongside red light therapy. That's actually the one I haven't heard of yet amongst uh, the people I've talked to. I'm so, you know, evidence-based, like I'm just so scientific, everything I do, engineer mine, I need to see, I need to see stuff. So we have like cone beam CT and x-ray in the office. I'm the only chiropractor that has it in like all the whole area. Wow. Because if I need to go deeper and see a CT version of your neck, because of maybe some other abnormalities, soft tissue, that we have that too. So same thing with the beds. I have two. No, not very many clinics have both the wrap and the bed. It's because that's how I, my mind works is I need to know that I'm giving the patient the absolute best. So we do blood work on everyone or ask for recent blood work before you even start the program. Awesome. That's awesome. Um, let's see. I think I have one or two more questions before I sure. let you go. Um, let's see. What was about um, – I think it had to do with um, skin. So, I mean – the way I see this going with me, myself and Jay is that we're going to be writing about red light therapy a lot. And I'm thinking it might be in our best idea, not our best idea, sorry, our best interest to do one deep dive article on each specific benefit of red light therapy. So like one article will be about fat loss. That's actually going to be our debut article. Then we'll start to go into a skin and then aging and other stuff. Um, what have you noticed with um, skin care specifically with uh, red lights? Personally, yeah, I've had this my whole life these, you know, these things, and they've left me with deep wrinkles. The deep wrinkles are gone. Like I don't have the, the deep wrinkles are gone. I've been using it for about six months. You can see them faintly, but they used to be deep. They used to look like this. Okay, mine are, I think I thought about pretty. Yeah. You and I, I mean, you're younger. So, I mean, that stuff can turn into a deep wrinkle, but for me it was, and I've noticed that with my usage about twice a week. Mm-hmm. So that that's been what I've seen uh, inflammation for sure. Uh, my jawline and all that, I can see that the inflammation mm-hmm. gone down too. Uh, and my wife said, said the same thing from a female perspective as well, wrinkles. And that's been the number one thing. A lot of people, because of the elastin production, it stimulates the elastin and the collagen production in our skin. So as mm-hmm. we age, it's almost like the skin stops talking to the, to the rest of the body and it doesn't require the collagen production anymore, but the light just kind of wakes up that whole process and, and the collagen production starts again, which is very cool. Awesome. Um, what about um? Would it also work for um dark eyes, like, like under the circles? Would red light work for that too? I don't know. I don't know. That's a great one. I'll I'll keep an eye on it. I don't have that. I don't know very many patients that have said anything about that. But uh, we've said we've seen blemishes, rosacea, uh, even some people freckles. They said the, those uh, seem like they're diminishing or fading. Um, but the wrinkle, the crows. What do they call that crow's feet on the side right. for the older population? They they're super happy about that. So I don't know. I don't know about the dark. Okay. Uh one one final one I'll ask about before I, I let you go is uh pain. So you mentioned with that one you need a different wavelength to uh penetrate the body. Mm-hmm. You, you kind of you change it on the mass of the patient. So you if they're bigger, you want to get a little bit more of a higher wavelength to penetrate the skin a little bit further. 
Uh, I don't do spine on it because I, I just know the science. I don't think we're going to get that deep with red light. doesn't hurt to try, but I, I'm doing it for more of my extremity patients, knees, ankles, shoulders, mm -hmm. neck pain. We put them on there for decreasing pain because if you decrease inflammation, automatically you, you feel better. So that's like people who are taking four Tylenol all day. I'm like, mm -hmm. hang on a second. Let's go try the red light. And immediately they're like, I'm not taking the Tylenol anymore because they're feeling right. better. They're feeling good enough to not take any drugs, which is great from a, from my perspective, I don't want you taking 150 tablets in a, in a month because that's right. not good for your kidneys. So, um, so that, that's, that's how we help them that way. Okay. Um, and so for the pain, I mean, is, it, it pretty much just comes down to inflammation reduction, right? With that mechanism. But um, right. I'm wondering, um, does it actually treat the underlying problem or is it just something that like masks the pain, but doesn't treat like what's causing the pain in the first place? It stimulates ATP. We know that. Stimulating ATP stimulates the cell's regenerative properties, which can help with the healing process. So we also do stem cell and regenerative medicine in our office where we actually inject joints with stem cells or PRP. We will couple that with red light therapy too to help speed up that process and contain it. Um, so yeah, so because we know how cells work. So if we're pumping in stem cells for whatever, five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars $8,000, we want to make sure that those stay healthy, replicate properly, and red light can facilitate that. Okay. I'm, I'm, I, was just, I was just kind of wondering like what to what extent pain is treated by or let there because imagine it wouldn't be like a hundred percent. Like imagine it'd be more like, it'll help. It's like, it's like the fat loss thing. It's like an accelerant, but it's not a cure. Correct. You're right. Wherever you use photonic energy and you isolate it to any particular pain site or joint, it's going to facilitate more ATP production and, and white blood cell and plasma production in that area. It's going to attract those cells that help heal tissue. So you're, boosting the body's natural ability to heal but you're not doing any type of microsurgery to help the tissue or anything like that okay that makes sense um dr dosa i seeing you right dosa dosa core yeah yeah perfect um listen i'll let you go i'm really appreciate you taking the time to sit here and interview with me i do apologize for being late this morning um send me the recording when you can i mean don't rush uh i may come back to you with more questions but Thanks so much for tuning into this episode of Living a Full Life Podcast. If you're enjoying the show, please feel free to rate, subscribe, and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. That helps others find the show, and we greatly appreciate it. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll catch you in the next episode.